I arrive at Charleston Broom and Mop on a brisk fall morning and make my way through the storage room, past rolls of straw, walls of tools hanging on pin boards, and dozens of brooms, bundled and stacked in tall rows. I find Jim Schaefer inside his dusty workshop, standing at a machine that helps him attach straw to a broomstick. Well, I'm James Schaefer. Most people call me Jim. I'm 87 years old, and I'm the owner of Charleston Broom and Mop Company here in Loudendale, only one mile short of Canal State Forest. Jim is tall, sporting jeans and suspenders, with a friendly face and big smile. His hands move adeptly around the broomstick, adding straw by the handful. He's done this so long he doesn't need to measure. He can build a broom by feel. Jim's brooms are the classic straw variety, the image you get in your mind when you think of a broom. They have a wooden handle, natural straw with wire binding the two at the top, and five bands of colored thread sewn across the midline of the broom. Often this thread is red, but he also sews them with blue, green, yellow, or white thread. The broom style and the equipment he uses hasn't really changed since Jim first started making them when he was 17. Well, the change has been in the usage of brooms, uh, straw brooms. Uh, they, of course, they uh, have so many, uh, instead of sweeping sidewalks and outside garage areas and everything, they use the gasoline blowers now to blow the dirt and dust away. Uh, same thing in the house with these new laminate floors they have. They're so slick that they've developed uh, dust mops type things for for those sweeping the house and things, uh, those that have those floors, and there's, you know, an awful lot of them. So the broom industry is is fading out. I, uh, I suspect another five to seven years you won't, won't find a straw broom in the store. Today, Jim's main customers are local Lions Clubs who buy them and sell them for their annual fundraisers. If it wasn't for Lions Clubs selling brooms as their f fundraisers, I wouldn't have a business today. Uh, as I say, and, and, and you know, back 20, 30 years ago or further back, we didn't sell hardly any Lions Clubs. It was all wholesale distributors. But Walmart, Kmart, and Kroger's have took all that over now, and you don't have any mom and pop stores to to buy from the wholesale distributors, so they all went out of business. Jim also sells at Pile Hardware, a local store that's been operating on Charleston's west side for 84 years, just three years younger than Jim himself. Bill Pyle owns a store and says customers even make special trips to Charleston just to buy Jim's brooms. He does that out of pride. I mean, when he turns out a broom, he wants it to be just right, and he's proud of it. Bill is a third-generation owner of Pile Hardware. Back when he was a teenager working for his dad, Bill's father sent him to buy brooms from Jim. They just make a lot of different models, and most of them has to do with the size. There's a six, there's an eight, and the eight's a little bit bigger. They make a black beauty that has black bristles in it. Then they make warehouse and railroad brooms, and they're usually a broom that's made to heavy, sweet, sweep heavy stuff. If Jim Schaefer is shopping at a store other than Pyle, he makes sure to check out the broom competition. He judges a store based on the brooms they sell. When I go into a store, I always check the broom rack to see what, what broom they have in the rack and how it's made, what it, the quality of it, the quality of the straw they're using in it. Uh, as well as the, the price and everything. How does a synthetic broom compare to one of your brooms? Well, the synthetic uh, plastic straw doesn't compare to a, a natural corn broom at all, uh, the sweeping quality of it. Along with the natural straw, another feature that makes Jim's brooms unique are the five bands of thread he sews across the broom to hold the straw together. This detail factors heavily in Jim's pride in his product, as well as his judgment of other brooms. We see a lot of them in the store today, the three bands or so, and I don't approve of that. I don't think I've ever made an order for anyone with three bands. I have used five and six, but uh, it just 
matter of personal opinion to me is to, uh, that sewing of the broom is is uh, uh, makes a durab durability longer if it's sewn tight enough that it doesn't in time flex and come you know loose where it flips instead of sweeps. <laughs> So you look down on a three-band broom? Well, sure. You know, if you, whatever product you're into, anybody else don't sum up your standards, you don't approve of it. While Jim may have slowed down, that's not apparent from the tall stacks of brooms lining his workshop. When Jim's gone, though, it isn't clear how the broom-making tradition will continue in West Virginia. Well, when I finally give up on it, uh, I guess it'll just die. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people in the Lions Club kind of worry about it. Some of them have even considered, you know, trying to run run it on their own. And uh, but uh, it, it's it's uh, nobody's come up. It's just uh, not a profitable enough business to stay in unless you're basically in my position where you're. Roosevelt sending yet Roosevelt check every month Social Security. <laughs> Jim has taught some apprentices over the years, but no one has stuck with it. When it comes to retirement, though, Jim isn't interested. Well, you got to have something to do, and I, you know, I feel great every, all day, every day, so I have to do something. Uh, since if I didn't, wasn't here making brooms, I'd be maybe over at McDonald's making hamburgers or something. I mean. Uh, you need to keep yourself occupied and and busy if you if you're able to, and thank goodness I've been able to pretty much all my life. Jim says that the only downfall to his job is that he does get lonely. Sometimes I'll go a week without somebody walking through the door, but it really doesn't bother me a whole lot. But I do enjoy company. To pass the time while he works, Jim keeps his radio tuned to WQBE Country and Western and he's worn out a number of radios in his time on the job. There's at least three stacked in his workshop, covered with cobwebs and broom straw. While he makes hundreds of brooms a week, he said he doesn't really sweep his own shop. But Jim always appreciates visitors. He'll even make a special broom for you, right on the spot. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Emily Hilliard in Loudendale.